a stranger is out to find you. <laughs> what you do? Grab on to some ducktails. Woo hoo! Ooh. Or woo woo, actually. Uh, as you can tell, this is Lux. And Ember. And this is our thoughts on, yes, we're finally getting back to it, DuckTales Season 1, Episodes 2 through 5. Or as Disney put it, Episodes 3, 9, 2, and 4. Really? And this is the reason it took us so long to get back to this. We had to wait till they released all the episodes that were currently in the queue so we could actually watch them in the correct order. And then we had to take the time to look up what the graders intended the order to be and make sure that we were able to view them in that order because you know how apps can be sometimes. So this is Day Trip of Doom, Mount Neverest, The Great Dime Chase, Beagle Birthday Massacre. I'm just looking at this chart because I have all the episodes in the correct order that the intenders wanted you to watch and it is just all over the place. Like, episode 9 is episode 6, episode 8 is actually episode 8. Hey, look, the Kip went in order. Or not, because of the weird split they're going to be doing with the Escape From slash to Atlantis being edited out of Woo Hoo as its own episode. They, are, they actually have two episode 8s, which is Infernal Internship of the Marked Beaks. Okay, so yeah, they have, it's just all over the place. But... Off of that fun topic of Disney going, well, we have to show episode three as episode nine because it mentions the word Christmas. So, of course, we had to show it in December. Yeah, I'm done now. Okay, let's actually talk about the episodes. This show is just so well done. If it wasn't for the fact that these people were working on this show, I would want them to work on the Big Hero 6 show. Definitely. We just need to clone these people and have them take care of all of Disney shows. Because these people are seriously talented. <laughs> the writers, the animation, oh my god, it's so smooth. And there's little details everywhere. Also, Launchpad. J just Launchpad. Yes, yes. And then there's Scrooge, Webby, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Donald. Beakley. And just, wow. And I like how they handled the... Beagle Boys, too. Also, spoilers in case you haven't watched the episodes. I mean, it's not like Disney didn't give you the spoilers already, because they put the episode where Magic and the Spell gets introduced in a weird spot. Like, apparently, they also reordered one where she shows up again later. And they put it right after this one, because kids can't be um, away from a character they were just introduced to for a certain number of episodes to let us build up the story. No, we have to have this new character that the kids are probably interested in show up again in the next episode. Yeah, so apparently they bring Lena back way too soon after having her show up too soon. Um, it's kind of more important to have Webby have more of her social awkward experiences before she manages to make a friend connection outside of the family. Crazy. This show is so good so far. I mean, we just watched the intro four times in a row and it didn't get old once. No, and we didn't fast forward through it. At all. Also, we have to give props to the Disney app. Because <laughs> the only problem we had was the fact that I had to restart my Chromecast. Which was probably not the app's fault. But the playback was smooth. The commercials, they were short. Sweet and to the point and we enjoyed them. We didn't even mute the TV. And Ember's a chronic channel surfer. The moment commercials come on, she will switch away from the channel she's watching to find something else to watch. Chronic channel surfer. I suffer through commercials because I don't want to miss anything. She's like, nope, can't watch commercials. Yeah, but these were like 15 seconds. What were they about? Star Versus, books, Star Wars series. I see no issue with any of this. Star Wars Rebel. Also the new Wrinkle in Time movie. Fun fact, this is actually the second Wrinkle in Time movie Disney has done. Yeah, no one remembers the first one. Yeah, apparently it was one of those direct-to-DVD things. Oh, uh, they, they went through a phase of doing that. It looked okay. I recognize some of the actors in that original one because I actually watched part of it. Because I was like, wait, didn't, already, didn't Disney already do a Wrinkle in Time? 
but haven't you noticed that Disney's current renaissance is redoing every movie in their catalog? And either in live action or better than the previous version? This series gives me hope for Darkwing Duck. Also, Gizmo Duck! Is on his way, though, because we've seen Gyro, but we haven't seen Fenton yet. Speaking of Gyro, I also love the joke about, oh, I gave you the wrong, this is a 70 watt bulb. You were designed for a 50 watt bulb. You were just mad with power. <laughs> <laughs> Not evil, just got a little power mad. Uh, okay. <laughs> also, Scrooge's last tactic of, these are the most brilliant people in the world, and then, psh, okay, they're crazy. If you fire them, they're going to come back for revenge. I vote we move our main offices over here. I vote we keep these people as far away from our main office as possible. Motion passed. And because I'm so excited about this series, I have a feeling I'm spiking the mic. I apologize. I'm going to do what I can in editing. Yeah, he gets on my case for spiking the mic during my dramatic readings, but here he's just out of control. I'm getting on my own case. and. I'm calming down. I'm going to whisper for the rest of the episode. You're going to hate me. <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah, and one of the things I'm liking about this iteration of DuckTales is that we're seeing Donald more often. Yeah, because in the first iteration, first episode, I'm sorry, kids, I have to leave you behind. I, I think he only like showed up maybe once or twice after that. In the entirety of the series. But when you go back to the original comic books, he's in there every single comic book. And him and Beakley coming to an understanding because he finally impresses her. Because the Beagle Boys hit his rage button. I also like, how can you do all this stuff? It's because I'm a spy. And do I believe that? Possibly. Actually, probably. Yeah, I think she was a spy. Probably for Scrooge. And she may still be a spy. That's why she is. I am not your secretary. Yeah, she certainly has said that often enough. Also, I love the war zone. <laughs> He's like, ah, kids will be kids. But Donald in Scrooge's private bathroom? Nope. House meeting. <laughs> now. Also, apparently, his unmentionables all over the bathroom. We will now call the unmentionables incident. <laughs> also, I'm thinking... Donald doesn't wear any pants! How does he have unmentionables? I was not even thinking about that, and depends on what you want to define as unmentionables. It could just be his undershirts. Well, that's possible, but it's like, but he doesn't have any pants. No, no pants. No underwear. <sighs> For all we know, that is the underwear, and it just looks like feathers. <sighs> okay. Taking that topic and moving on. <laughs> hey, you brought it up. <laughs> yeah, but it crossed the line. And also that awesome moment when Scrooge was in the bathtub with the cucumbers on his eyes and he goes, something's wrong, and switches out the cucumbers for coins and then suddenly the bathtub is full of coins. It's like watching one of those Old Spice commercials of... Look at your man. Look at me. Now back to me. I am not your man. But your man could smell like me. And now I have this handful of gems that came out of nowhere. By the way, that entire commercial, no digital effects. All f practical effects done in one shot. Impressive. Yes. All right, but continuing. It's been nice that after the premiere, none of these episodes have actually been treasure-seeking. Mount Neverest was an adventure. But there was no treasure. Actually, there was treasure, but not in the usual sense. Yeah, not in the financial sense. The treasure was was Scrooge learning something and Huey. Dewey or Louie? Huey. Probably Huey. Let me look at my notes, actually. <laughs> I have notes. Huey's the one in red, Louie's the one in green, Dewey's you're, the one in blue. You're right, it's Huey. Because on my notes it says unnamed Huey episode, which was the one that we were missing, which is... The one where they mentioned Christmas, so they had to delay it or move it up to December. Also has snow in it, so of course, you know, Christmas. And I love how often you, Scrooge reiterates how many enemies he has and how many death curses are on him. <laughs> What's this magical defense thing that's costing $15 million? Do you know how many death curses I have on my head? 
Which they also bring up in the Neverest episode. It's like, if I had a dime for every time someone cursed me with their dying breath, I'd be twice as rich as I am now. <laughs> oh god, this series. It's beautiful. It's awesome. I mean, in three out of five episodes, we've mentioned the Beagle Boys. Because in the premiere, Webby mentions the Beagle Boys. Then we have the Beagle Boys in the Fenso episode. And then we have all the Beagle Boys in the birthday episode. I love how we have variety. I can't name all of them, but they had like the Beagle Boys from France, the Beagle Boys Extreme, the Beagle Boys from France. They had the scary ones, the knockoff ones, the extreme 90s version, the French version, the creepy version. Not to mention the French version. <laughs> but yeah, we have all these different versions of Beagle Boys. Ah, oh, poor Ma Beagle. Raised so many stupid people. Though I do like how in the first episode they're introduced, Ma goes, You idiot! Now we have four targets on our back. Which makes sense. If anyone's ever encountered Scrooge before, you know, not only is he a penny pincher who wouldn't pay a ransom, he would come and hunt you down, and hunt your family down, and then hunt your family family down. Because it would be cheaper to do that than pay the ransom. Also more satisfying. Quite. So many crazy, well-done things. Also, nice storytelling. Nice order. Well done. I don't know why Disney was like, we got to reorder these things for proper broadcast. Otherwise, the stupid kids won't understand the show. What about the quote-unquote smart adults who actually enjoyed the show and are most likely to watch it? Kids are going to watch it. They're going to find it on their own. They won't care. But the adults who already know about it and you were hyping will watch it and spend more money on you than the kids will. thought we were done with this topic. I am. I just finished it. <laughs> That's why I stopped. I was like, she's going to bring up something else about the show and I'll talk about that. <laughs> so at first when they went to the Funzo's Fun Zone, I thought Wubby's reaction was going to be disappointment based on all the cool stuff they did in the Atlantis episode and, you know, how hardcore she is to go, oh, this is just kid stuff. Yeah, but that's the thing, is she's never had kid stuff, and she's heard about it her entire, her entire life. She has a notebook of kid things she wants to do, like slut ink. Yes. <laughs> Wait for it. Oh, okay. Wait for it. Oh, okay. How about now? Wait for it. <laughs> now. <laughs> So that was sledding. Eh. <laughs> Never rated. Also, I love the one of the first things she was like, ball pit! <laughs> <laughs> also, trap! <laughs> yes, yes, because I don't entirely, un I mean, I kind of understand, but they're so sinking. You go to like Chuck E. Cheese's, I can't exactly say now, but you go to the more modern ball pits and they're like two inches deep. Yeah, there's like three balls high, and those balls are slightly compressed. So you stick your foot in, and you're like, it's up to my ankle. Yeah, not like when we were kids. Yeah. Where we're... you would actually try to dive down, because there were rumors that if you dove down, there were like special reward tokens. I guess because just like in this episode, you would lose kids, then that wouldn't be a good thing, because the parents would be like, I lost my kid. Well, they shouldn't have gone into the ball pit without supervision. <laughs> Get the fishing line. Hey. What was your kid like? Twinkies? Bagels? Pizza? Pizza with anchovies? It's going to take us a while to clean out that smell, but okay! <laughs> we got one! Oh, hey, this is the kid we lost last week! Yes, and also that fun thing of adults not allowed in without children. Because that's actually a thing at places like that. Makes sense. Yeah, to try to cut down on the creepers. I also love, you're not buying this. Also, that also reminds me of right when the Beagle Boys are first introduced. Sorry, I can't remember his name now. It's like, Carl. Sorry, Carl. Same time next month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh, though there was a bit of a cringe moment for both of us in the ball pit episode. Yeah. We actually had to pause it. But this was not good cringe, but cringe from good writing. Not the usual cringe of like, ooh, Ooh, that's bad writing right there. No, this was the cringe of, oh, this makes sense, but we can see where it's going and it hurts. Mm-hmm. I think it's also because 
Louis doesn't quite fully explain how things works to Webby, so she misinterprets what he says. And doesn't execute it at all well. And I'm sorry, you're practically family. She can't drink from your cup. Also free refills, I'm guessing. So... Well, they mention free refills on punch when they're hyping the place to Webby. So, yeah, once you're done with yours, hand it to her. And if you're really, really, really worried about germs, actually use the water part of the fountain, rinse, and pour. It's not like we're in Japan or anything that would be considered an indirect kiss. I'm just not getting that part of that culture. I really gotta look into that. That whole indirect kiss thing, like, I never thought that ever, like, over here. No, no, I think the first time I encountered that was around Host Club. Hmm. I encountered it in older shows than that. You watch more shoujo than I do. What can I say? I love a good romance. Or a bad one for that matter. Yeah. Leather pants. <laughs> Look up Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged Leather Pants. You'll know what I'm talking about now. Moving back to the show. <laughs> and now that song's in my head. You did it to yourself. Why am I speaking French? <laughs> Oh, and I just feel so badly that after spending all that time with Webby, Lena's probably going to end up backstabbing her with this whole thing with Magicka. Yeah, apparently Magicka the spell is actually trapped in an amulet. And I have a feeling we're emphasizing more importance on the, how the number one dime actually works for Magicka the spell now. She probably needs something of that nature to break whatever spell is trapping her. And that's why Lena says I'm in, because... She may actually be in the family. As in, I'm in. I have an in to the Scrooge McDuck Manor. Not just the phrase like, I'm in on this plan. I was thinking it more of, I'm in on this deal. You know, whatever Magica offered her in return for helping her escape. I'm actually thinking like it's, it's both. I'm in on this. Also, I have an in in the family. But I can't wait to see um, Magicka's new design. Because all we have right now is a silhouette. A silhouette that's made of shadow. So it could be very far off from what she actually looks like. Also, I really like this new iteration of Gyro. <laughs> Just his interaction when he came into the boardroom. You remember what we said about human interaction? Oh, the cards. <laughs> Only 50% of my inventions have gone evil. A little, little crazy there. Yeah, just a tad. And also, you know, the robot that can do anything with the nephew who doesn't want to do a dang thing. I took the concept of being rich a little too far. You have six cans right there. Yeah, but the fizz is only good for the first sip. No, it's not. Also, oh, my phone's dead. Need to get an charge it well it's three months old anyways three months the phone i'm using right now is almost it's probably um, two and a half maybe three years now hmm. let's look at when i purchased it because <laughs> i know it died once and i had to get it repaired thank you nexus 5x you're a wonderful phone except for the fact that lg didn't properly solder your CPU to your motherboard. Yay! So basically any Nexus 5X is like a ticking time bomb. Usually. But moving on. Because so far mine's lasted a year and a half. So let's see. What else did we want to go over? I'd like to know why Lena wanted to break into a Beagle Boy party. If Lena, by the sun of it, has been doing her research, she's been observing Webby. So she knows Webby likes adventure. And she thought that would be a good way to get her in. And that's why she was writing all those notes in a bottle. Because she knows Webby would find one based on her location. Because she saw, we didn't see her there, but somehow she knew about being dropped off. And Webby didn't mention the fact that she was left behind by the brothers. So that was either a conversation that occurred off screen or Lena actually knew. And she would know by observation. So I'm guessing that's why she took her there because she wants, she knows she wants adventure. She knows it'd be a good way to get in. 
and she probably knows that she could handle herself because I have a feeling that she has powers we haven't seen yet thanks to the amulet. There's probably some power she can get from it. Probably. And also Lena seems to be a fairly competent individual, so definitely has some family issues. Yeah, because I believe she called her aunt the spell or something along those lines. I don't remember that at all. I know she said she was a relative. So if I remember it correctly, it was aunt the spell or something along those lines. So that means her parents are related to the spell in some way and her parents did something that made her run away and find the spell or something or she was looking through the stuff ran into the amulet the amulet talked to her and so she ran off from her parents or she could have legitimately got it from a thrift shop because i don't remember lena calling her aunt and i don't remember her saying dispel it was magica she only said Magica. She said the first name. It, it was something like that, but she definitely used a word that meant some type of relative before she said um, Magica. Well, we can watch the episode, that part of the episode again. It's right at the end, but we're not going to do it right now. <laughs> so what's next? Uh, let's see. Louis wading through the money, wanting to dive into the money bin. Oh, yeah. That's a good spot. <laughs> Scrooge going, what are you doing? You're going to break your neck. You're going to crack your skull open. But you do it for after years of practice. Strength training and dexterity. <laughs> uh, also going back to that first episode, they made Scrooge diving into his money a moment in the show. You were like, yeah. So I bring that up again because they emphasize it right here too. It's like, that's a special thing that Scrooge learn to do himself we also got the awesome story of the number one dime we also find out that scrooge keeps it on him all the time which is a whole lot smarter than the old mcduck yes because in the first generation the coin on the velvet cushion is the actual number one dime and it's not in his thinking room because that's where he kept his dime in the original animated show was a room which was his thinking room it was in the pedestal right in the center this one actually is in like in his office or something Oh, the one on the pedestal is yeah. in his office, specifically his money bin office. Also, launch pad with the snow fever and Louis's uh, hustle to get back at the guy for selling launch pad, all that stuff. Nobody hustles my family except me. That's why we see that one point where he's like, yeah, I'll let him believe I saved him. Uh, and I just realized after watching the intro like four times in a row, that in the intro, Louis actually one of the few that actually is running around with arms of treasure. Everyone else is just running from things. He actually has treasure in his arms. I also like the end of that particular episode where he's like, Cool, maybe I'll do this on a pedestal too, just like you. Spend. No! And also, not only that he immediately spent the dime. But we established early in the episode that it cost a dollar ten to get a soda out of that thing. Because you have to pay for the deposit. <laughs> I knew there was something fishy, but I can't remember what a deposit is. Why, why would you need a deposit? Well, in the state of California, it's called the CRV, California Redemption Value. I had a feeling that's what you were talking about. And I could be misinterpreting. It could have just said deposit ten cents because it actually cost a dollar ten to get the soda. And so he was 10 cents short, but it made me think, no, no, the soda machines in Scrooge's money bin would charge the CRV deposit instead of having it factored into the cost of the soda. I think you're right about that, because I remember blinking a dollar before Louis inserted his dollar. Then it said 10 cent deposit. There's just so much good in this. I mean, we've already talked for... 36 minutes or so unedited. So, any more you want to go over? Or should we, like, maybe wrap things up? Or <laughs> oh, Just a little bit more of the awesomeness with Launchpad and the snow blindness and Louis getting his revenge on the dealer. Ah, yeah, the classic. Rival the guy up and make him so worried about, like, something. Oh, he's faking it because this isn't real. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and also, did Scrooge ever pay for that shirt that he took off the hanger and defaced? Yeah, I 
No. No, I don't think he did at all. Probably not. And there was also a nice touch at the end that we had seen the map go through a wormhole and end up at the summit. That whole, oh, if we'd started from here, we could have made the summit. Yep, instantly, in fact. But only the audience knows that. Because if Scrooge knew it, he'd go right back up. I also like the touch that it was Scrooge's cautiousness that got him that name. And the fact that the guy backstabbed him and also did something. So it wasn't really Scrooge's fault. And especially the fact that they placed it when he was really young and he made his first million. So he was still wasn't the Scrooge we know today of how awesome he is. But you have to wonder, okay, so how old does that make Scrooge? Because that was 75 years ago that the thing at Neverest happened. So even if you go on the young side and say he was like 10, which there's no way he was only 10, that would still make him 85. Yeah, I'm thinking he was like more like 16, 17, probably 18, actually. So that puts him up in his 90s. Dang, Scrooge. Nice job. Can I borrow your health secrets? <laughs> I think it's called being rich. <laughs> Except for all the rich food. But I don't think Scrooge eats that richly. No, no, because he's Scrooge, but he only spends money where it's necessary. So I'm sure his doctors are top notch. Good point. Did he even factor in the doctors? I just thought Scrooge would do everything he can to avoid doctors because they rip him off. Well, we've seen that Scrooge will spend money when he has to. So spend money or die. I know it's a tough call. But spend money's probably going to win over dying. Mm. Also, the entire library sequence. That's like right up your alley. I mean, we have a whole video series devoted to reading books. Yes. Yes, we do. And where's the reading room? You can find a link to it on our channel. Because, you know, it's on our channel. I might even be able to put one of those eye things in one of the corners if I remember to do that or if I have the time. That's my main problem. I can upload the videos, get everything scheduled. But I don't always have time to do annotations. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it's not hard to find. So first, the entire thing with getting into the library, the trials, and then things getting violent and serious, and threatening to damage that book. I also like how, is this a ploy to have us do your work? 50%! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being honest. Appreciate that. You know, and then how it all lights up and he goes to put his hand out. I'm like, there's no way his handprint's going to work. And then, oh, hey, it just stabbed me. I'm like, oh, blood test. Yeah, that works. McDuck DNA confirmed. Opening the cell. Makes you wonder if this is actually connected to Magicka as well. Maybe Huey, Dewey, and Louie's mom had something to do with the sealing of Magicka. Possibly, because we know she took the spear. And that seems to be a sticking point. Also, since we went from that episode and the beginning of the following episode was them in the boat, I almost thought they were taking the kayak to follow up on what they had found in the archives until they showed all three of the nephews. Because Dewey wasn't sharing that information until he got more information. He's like, this is not enough to go on. So, if that was the case, the other two boys wouldn't have been there. Would have just been him and Webby. Can't wait for the next four episodes we're going to watch. Yeah, we're doing this in four episode chunks until we catch up. And then, once, I hope Disney doesn't mess up the next set of episodes of what they probably will call season two at this point. Well, we'll see how it goes, because MLP won't be on hiatus for forever. Well, we'll see how things work then. Who knows, you guys might get more episodes, or I might die from editing, I don't know. You might just see a time-lapse stop right in the middle of a drawing, and you hear a clatter, and then, uh-oh, it says Lux has died. <laughs> but, can't wait to watch more episodes, but I'm gonna have to, because sleep! And this has been our thoughts on Disney's DuckTales reboot, Season 1, Episodes 2 through 5. Creator's order, not broadcast order. And you're still here? You know, we don't change the outros up that much. Okay, yes, we do record them originally almost every single time, but still. Except when we get really creative, they're not that interesting. 
So usual sales pitch, like, subscribe, share, comment, watch other videos. Our watch time numbers, if we get those up high enough, we might get ad revenue back. Yes, we're asking for your help to get ads back on our channel so you're stuck watching ads. Oh, you guys just ran away, didn't you? Please come back. Uh, enjoy Lex's art. There's more of it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Google+, Facebook, Mastodon, Reddit, wherever he finds on the internet to put it. And he does take commissions, so check the link for pricing and availability. You just want to throw money at him, like he's Dipper in the wolf outfit. You throw coins and he dances. I will dance. I will run. <laughs> uh, two options. Monthly, you can do Patreon, which starts at a dollar, which gets you sketches and voting rights. Higher tiers, more rewards. You know the deal. Don't want a subscription, but want to throw a few coins? Uh, try coffee. KO-FI. Works in increments of three. Thanks again for listening, and thanks to all our current supporters in a variety of formats. Those who watch, those who like, those who comment, and those who donate. Thank you.